Hello there, it's Fiona from Weekly Sewing Bee. Now I've been a bit distracted recently because I've been making art quilts. Now art quilts are an ideal form for me because I have lots of scraps and you know I'm not asking you to argue with me here but I'm not the tidiest of person. Um, so basically today I'm going to go through it. Now these are genuine scrap, strap, uh, scraps um, and you can see, uh, you might be able to sort of recognise some fabric that I've used and you might be able to recognise some shapes that are here. Like this is obviously uh, an armpit. <laughs> I know. So, and um, yeah, it's all good. So basically what I have here is I have a rectangle of cloth. Now what I would say about these art quilts is the more bigger they are the more complicated it gets in, uh, just I think okay this is Fiona thinks so I know a genuine bit of scrap you can see same V again although larger because this was from um, the lining of a coat and it's nice because you can mix fabrics I've got the lining of uh, a jacket here and I have also the jacket in the pile so yeah so that's that's nice as far as I'm concerned now what I'm doing is I'm not worrying about the bottom but I am worrying about the top so that's that's the only bit I'm worried about now when you're sewing um, mixed fabrics you know you do have to be aware of thickness levels and everything else like that but I don't know you know my sewing machine seems to have coped with it quite well so. and Sorry I'm not talking, I'm kind of thinking. Now what I'm doing is I'm laying this out um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew it together. But what I'm, you know, so I'll pick up the bottom bit and then I'll pick up yeah you see exactly the same again the same the same V um, so you know it's all good and because I'm using scraps of things that I've made then it's kind of like a nice memory for me um, the only thing is that because they're like my scraps they probably don't go as well as they should because I'm I'm um, doing it from memory you know I'm going well this lining goes with this jacket but I was going to use this lining but there wasn't enough of it and I've been doing a lot of this tartan this is the green left over from <coughs> yes so maybe, maybe not a good idea, maybe I need to um, put it away and then come back and look at it, um, but I um, can't change who I am. Okay, I have got this, this is my Christmas stash, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know if I'm going to put a couple of Christmas trees in there. I think there's too much green, isn't there? So I might just put a line of Christmas trees. And, um, yeah. I'll put a few. Not too many, but enough. Yeah, 
I'm sure if any of you know any sewers at all, they'll be saying, oh, we have to start worrying about Christmas. So, yes. Okay, so that's me. That's me happy. Um, obviously, this is very, very small, but I think it's an excellent size for a demonstration. All right, so the next job is I need to lie this down somewhere where I can grab it, and then I can start sewing. And I'll sew this line on, and then I'll pick up the next line, and then I'll pick up the next line. So... Yeah, it's all good. <clears throat> I have my sewing machine set up with a zigzag stitch and um, that just makes life easier for me. I, um, yeah, okay, the thing about arc quilts, there's no right and wrong, so it's brilliant in that respect. And you literally do what you have you can set your own rules um, I have a thing about not buying any fabric for it so I um, tend to just use what I have yeah but that's a personal rule um, and I say that I obviously bought the backing and I've obviously been keeping the scraps for a couple of years Okay, so I've got it all set up on zigzag and I've got it on a very loose stitch. This is so that I can sew all these different fabrics. Some of them are shiny, some of them are very thin lining and some of them are um, quite thick. So yeah, it's all good. I've just unplugged my <coughs> thread. Yes very professional it's because I'm using that art side of my brain rather than my presenting side of the brain I suppose and of course I've lost my scissors so there we go now um, the ones I've been doing at the minute I've been doing a larger version of this which I finished last night quite nice home alone I was sitting there in front of the TV I managed to watch three Harry Potter films I just don't ask and um, I did quite a lot of sewing and um, tonight I'm hoping to finish another one which is a painting of a Scotty dog with tartan Scotty dogs floating around and now I've sewn all my tartan on to the backing sheet and all I've got to do is literally wait for this paint to dry and then I can yeah I can quilt it but the first one, that's all finished with now. Okay, now I, I must admit I do have a problem with threading the needle on camera. Even to the extent that I'm going to change machines so that I have one that self-threads. Because when I started doing these videos, I like the idea of um, doing a video of basic machines. Okay. I'm going to switch the camera off and I'll be back when I've got more to show you. Hi, so I've got my machine threaded up and away I go. Now, I'm not stitching two bits together. What I'm doing is stitching over the bottom bit because I have found that with some of these loose knit fabrics that they do thray. So you really need to sort of, rather than join the two together, you, you need to stitch to stop it fraying. So there we are at the back. I always like looking at the back of quilts. And um, you'll find that if you ever go to a, a show display of quilts, then you know quite often they don't sew them up at the back so that people can go and have a nose and see how tidy their work is. <laughs> Which is horrifying, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so I'm just putting on another bit. And um, yeah, even though I did lay it out, there is a certain amount of guesswork. 
and of course I have to make sure it's flat when I start sewing and um, I have to make sure that I'm not catching anything that I shouldn't be so and the motion is I'm sort of pushing it away um, this is just to make sure that it is flat doing a lot on my knee today because of that's just how I would work and I'm going to just lay it flat when it's straight then turn it on its side so that I can pick up as much of this as possible so, and um, it's like any quilting you know some fabrics are nicer to work with like this cotton is lovely to work with this is in fact sheeting and I really wish I had more of it. I, I, I do. It is so thick. It is, it's a beautiful fabric. And of course, it was on a double roll as well. So, and you know, you think you bought extra, but I, I, I think this was probably the biggest bit I had. So, now I've chosen to use a uh, white thread. Um, there was no fork process, there was white thread in the machine. So, um, yeah, and it depends how confident you are, I suppose. If, if, if you're really confident, then you can use uh, another colour thread, um, and it is. It's just how confident are you? So, yes, obviously I'm not feeling very confident because I'm using white thread. Okay, so... Yep, I find that the bits that start at the middle the hardest. Um, so, Okay, now I'm coming to the last bit. Now the last bit needs to be secured slightly more at the bottom as well. So I'm, I'm going to sew it along the side, but then I'm going to have a little wiggle with it and sew up the bottom. So. Obviously this last fabric is stretch fabric and um, I've just noticed I'm actually sewing it upside down, the pattern goes the other way. But yeah, that's the thing about art quilts. Who's to say? sure everything's tucked as flat as possible and um, I didn't trim it very well but there is a lot to say for trimming it properly before you start so the bottom one needs to be sewn completely on and um, this is where I haven't trimmed it but I can see the end of the line and the beginning of the line, so all I have to do is sew straight. But, you know, that, that, that's personal preference. Okay, 
Okay, as it is stretched, what I'm doing is just stretching the bottom and I'm stretching it now three quarters of the way along just so that it meets up nicely uh, rather than having stretching it just at the end. Because the thing is, if you've got a gap like this at the end, then you can either sew another piece of fabric on, which is easy enough, the principle's the same, or you end up cutting down the quilt and that is just a bit of a shame really, it's just a bit of a waste of fabric. So I'm just coming up the sides just to secure this last piece on. I'm not going to secure the other pieces on because I feel that they aren't secure. And um, yeah, I don't want too many stitches. Because when I line this, I don't want it to, to, to come over. Okay, now all my attempts to get rid of the excess cloth are failing, so I'll just do that now. Because it will just make the quilting harder, um, you'll end up with a pucker. <coughs> Let's get rid of that. Okay, so what we've got now is our background. Now you don't need a backing sheet. It is um, literally, I used a backing sheet today for this just because I thought it would be one less thing for me to think about. Um, these are my excess. If I do it from that side, you might be able to see it better. So, mm. yes. Now, if I was to paint a picture or just do a quilt, then um, obviously I would put something quite small in dimensions kind of up here so maybe a little farmhouse and then I would do probably just some embroidered flowers or we could just do some leaves and um, to be honest with you doing some leaves would be a great idea and that would just stabilize this stretch cloth at the bottom so and they're, they're literally just spikes and you could use contrasting fabric, uh, contrasting thread, or contrasting, or non-contrasting. I'd probably stay with the white, and I'd probably stay with the zigzag. Now, I prefer using zigzag when we're using this rough quilt, and because I just feel it holds it all together much more nicely. Now, of course, I could make it with folded over edges. Um, yeah, there's, there's no reason why I can't, other than time and sanity and patience. So, um, yeah, but it's an art quilt, so we can do what we like. Isn't that grand? All right, so there's the basis of an art quilt. Obviously, yeah, I think it looks fine as it is, but, you know, we could do some more to it. Okay, thank you ever so much for watching. My name's Fiona from Weekly Sewing Bee. Of course, uh, the next step is to line it and um, to actually quilt it, really. Or, yeah, yeah. Thank you ever so much for watching.